Well, hello, farm fans. Redford and I are doing our official first YouTube vlog for you all today. A while back, I had posted on our Facebook and Instagram information on bone broth and a few reasons why I love it and asked if you all wanted a tutorial. And many of you replied that you did. So that's what we're going to be doing today on this first official video um, of our Wildflower Moon Farm YouTube um, channel, I guess you could say. <laughs> first of all, I just wanna say welcome and let you know, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sierra and my husband and I run an organic farm with uh, wonderful registered Nigerian dwarf goats and organic chickens. You can check out our Facebook, Instagram, or our website, all at Wildflower Moon Farm. Our today's video is specifically on the benefits and how to make bone broth. So for those of you that have made it in the past or maybe are wanting to make it, but it feels maybe a little daunting or overwhelming, um, I'll just take you through the steps that I do. Um, it's very simple, very easy. Uh, don't let it overwhelm you. We'll go through it today. And then if you have any questions, please feel free to post it. So a few things about the broth that you'll be seeing uh, made today is there are many varieties, many things that you can add to it. Uh, for me, when I make my broth, just because of the fact that my dogs do consume, um, I do give them a little bit, the, all of the remnants from the broth after it's been strained, the, the veggies and whatnot, and then the meat, uh, there, there will be meat chunks in that. If you haven't made it, <laughs> you'll find out. Um, I save that and give that to my dogs a couple times a week, along with um, our wonderful kefir that we make here from our raw organic goat milk. So with that being said, I have to keep in mind what goes in the broth needs to be beneficial for those wonderful dogs <laughs> or and cats. Um, so you may know that you have to be very careful with garlic and dogs, but also another thing that really adds a lot of flavor to broth that I would recommend you adding it won't be added today, but um, onion. You can you can do a whole onion sliced up, even leave the skins on. Onion has a, a component to it, uh, thiosulfate, and dogs don't have the enzymes to be able to digest that. So it can be toxic to them. So again, if you are doing this with keeping your pets in mind, you wanna be sure to omit the onion. Garlic as well in large, um, even for some breeds and smaller portions, you have to be careful of. So I leave my garlic cloves whole, take those out before I give it to them. Do what's best for you. You may wanna consult your veterinarian. Um, I always recommend that before adding anything new to, to your dogs. I'm not a veterinarian. I am a veterinarian technician, but still I don't know your pet and only your vet does. So you okay, wanna... so before we get started with making it, just a few more points on the benefits of bone broth, in case you're not familiar. So bone broth, because it's so rich in collagen, collagen is what helps heal our tissues. Um, it also is very high in protein, amino acids, uh, several vitamins and minerals, calcium, iron, vitamin K. So it's great for people that are anemic. Um, it's just a real powerhouse of nutrients. But it is so important for good gut health when you're trying to heal your gut. The collagen helps rebuild the lining of your gut. You may have heard of the term leaky gut syndrome, and that's actually where chronic inflammation um, has caused holes in the lining of our intestines. And this causes then food to leak out through our intestines and go into our body where it shouldn't be. So this actually causes um, inflammatory immune response in our system. And many people are dealing with food allergies and maybe they don't realize that it's because they're dealing with leaky gut. Um, also IBS, many people are dealing with that sadly and again it's back to the gut health that is compromised in some way. Another interesting fact is that the majority of our serotonin is made in our gut. So when our gut is compromised, so is that. 
So if you've been dealing with depression, anxiety, having difficulty sleeping, it may very well be because your serotonin is not producing the way it should, and that's due again to you having a gut issue. So really focusing on your gut will help with those problems as well. I will also state something where there's a lot of vegetarian and vegan um, collagen boosters out there, um, but only unfortunately, um, because, and I say unfortunately, because if you, when you watch this video further, you'll see that I was a vegetarian for years and still really want to be. So it is challenging to have bone broth instead of those alternatives. I have tried those alternatives, but only uh, through the bones and cartilage and tissues of animals, I know that's nasty, um, can we get actual collagen. So um, the, the vegan alternatives help can help boost your own collagen. It is just not the same as actual collagen from the bone broth. And I have, have tried those, and I've also tried the powder bone broth, and I use that when um, I'm in a pinch if I, if I can't make it at home or if we're traveling. But I still never see the benefits from those products that I do with actual bone broth. So just wanted to state that for your information. So here we have our organic produce that's been washed and getting ready to be prepared to go in the pot. Um, we have a beautiful variety of fresh herbs from the garden. Italian parsley, curled leaf parsley, lemon thyme, cilantro. We have a nice portion of ginger. I wish we grew that, <laughs> maybe next spring. We have about four stalks of celery, three large carrots, and about seven cloves of garlic. So not all of these herbs are going to go into the pot. We're going to save some um, to be used as a garnish for afterwards when you're enjoying your broth. So let's get to preparing. Okay. So here we have it. And as you see, it's just roughly chopped into larger pieces. Um, so that's up to you however you want to do it. Just make it easy on yourself. The ginger I leave in larger cubes. Again, you can dice it. That's completely fine. The same with the garlic. I leave whole and you can dice that as well. The reason behind me doing it this way is, again, because I feed it to my dogs when it's um, done cooking. So the ginger I will actually pick out and the same with the garlic. Um, that way I can monitor how much garlic they are consuming because um, you want to be careful, remember, with the garlic. So uh, now let's get it in the pot. So I have placed about four marrow bones into the pot. And then what you want to do is go ahead and sprinkle apple cider vinegar over these bones. let that sit. They say about 20 minutes. Um, the acid in the apple cider vinegar helps pull the calcium from the bones. Um, however, if you don't have time to let it set, uh, just do what's easiest for you. However, that's uh, an, an important step if you now can. Now I have added the chicken, the organic chicken, after we have um, taken as much meat off of the uh, bird as we could. Three minutes now I've added the veggies on top and then I will go ahead and I, I roughly pulled apart some of the herbs so I'll add that. Now I'm going to add my seasonings. In this little dish I've incorporated organic dried herbs, uh, turmeric, Himalayan salt, sea salt, um, lemon, pepper, and also cumin. You can add whatever you think you would like as far as flavor goes. Um, I've also added ginger at times, um, so just make it your own. I will say that if you're using Himalayan salt, 
I find that the profile of the Himalayan salt, excuse me, is not as salty as regular salts that you're used to, so you may have to add a little more. Um, so my guess is between the two salts, there probably is three tablespoons in here. Again, that's a rough estimate. But remember, you can always salt your broth once it's done, but you can't take away the salt. Um, however, a good portion of salt does definitely make it more palatable for those of you that are struggling with drinking it. Um, but just keep that in mind. So we're going to sprinkle this on top. And then we will add our water. And you want to make sure with your crock pot that you do leave space at the top. Um, due to the fact that it will bubble up and because of the fat that is in the bones in the skin um, it will really start you, you don't want to mess <laughs> and the instapot will not work if you take it over the max line I have done that I always get a hard time from uh, my family and my husband because I fill things up my mugs are always way to the top my glass of water is way to the top <laughs> So I have a tendency to do that when I'm making bone broth. But I've learned the hard way. You don't want that the oils to come out over. It's a mess. It's a pain. And again, this Instapot will not work correctly if you fill it above the line. So I'm going to shut, shut her up. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to take a minute to talk to you, those out there who maybe um, are like myself in the fact that you have been a vegetarian for years or even a vegan and you have had to make the decision to add a little um, meat or bone broth into your life and it's a struggle and i completely understand that um, because i was a vegetarian for years for me and my body though i can't deny that adding this the benefits that i have received from this specifically every time i I you know have to admit that it is still every time I make it difficult and just try to do things um, as respectfully and consciously as possible getting your bones from a source that does care how the animal is raised try as much as possible to get it from a local farm uh, grass-fed animals um, try to do that as much as possible and I, I hope that helps. I just wanted you to know, I, I understand your struggle if you are struggling with this. So the lid is on, um, the little vent is shut up here, and then what we will do is we will come down and we are actually gonna do pressure cook. And you already see it's, it's set for the last time I used it, which is four hours. Now with the Instapot, you can make this in two hours um, but for me <laughs> I want to get as much out of it as possible and since I'm used to it taking two full days um, when I made it before four hours is very speedy <laughs> to me so you do whatever you think is best but then what it will do is it's on and it's pressurizing and we will just let it do that Okay, so once it pressurizes, I don't know if you can see this, um, your timer will start. So it will not, your timer will not start until the pot gets pressurized. So I should have timed it, but I think it took about 20 minutes or so. Okay, um, so I just wanted to make mention of the fact that uh, once I started adding the chicken to my stock, um, the chicken bones and and ligaments and skin, I noticed a real thickening of my broth. It always had a good thickness before using the marrow bones, the knuckle bones and whatnot. Um, but when I added the chicken, I noticed it really did thicken up. So the thicker your broth is, the more gelatinous it is, the higher the collagen that's, that's in it. And so you really want that. You want as thick of a broth as possible. Okay. It so beeped that. letting me know that we are finished. I wanted to mention that when we started the video, this keep warm button was on. It was lit up if you noticed. 
Um, that is a wonderful feature that allows the allotted cooking time to end, but then it keeps everything nice and warm, which I did go ahead and shut that off once it had started due to the fact that I want my broth to cool down quicker. And if that's left on, it will keep it warm. So here is the vent and it is still all sealed from the pressure uh, cooking process. So there's a lot of pressure going on in here. So if I wanted to speed this up, uh, which I do, I'm going to release this vent, but this is where you wanna be very careful because of all the pressure that steam is going to come flooding out. And because we did bone broth, all of those um, oils from that process will also come out and that can make a mess and as you see I have plants all lined up here and I do not want them to get burned so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this with a paper towel first and then a washcloth just to capture the oils and I'm going to turn this and let it do its thing finished venting and now I'm going to open the lid still use care because oh my goodness yum if you guys could smell this it smells wonderful and it is so amazing so if I were to go even longer than this you would see these larger bones breaking down so you can even cook it longer than this but you will see um, here in just a minute how the smaller bones will just disintegrate. So now I have removed the stainless steel pot from the Instant Pot because this will help it cool down quicker. If I were to have left it in here, it will stay warm much longer. Um, so I'm gonna let this cool just until it's cool enough for me to handle. Okay, so once this is cool enough uh, for me to handle, I go set ahead. in the sink a stainless steel large metal bowl, so the largest you have, and then I have this wonderful um, strainer. Uh, this works fantastically. So if you don't have this, I would recommend you getting this. <laughs> okay, so then what we do next is we go ahead and we fish out some of the bigger bones. And we do this so that we don't splash them when we're pouring it because it will absolutely splash your broth everywhere. And because of that wonderful anti-inflammatory turmeric, it's fantastic, but boy, if you guys have used it before and spilt it anywhere, you know how much it stains. So then what I do at this point is because um, there is still a little bit of marrow and whatnot in these bones, I go ahead and I take filtered water and I pour it over the bones, in essence, rinsing them off. I don't want to lose any of that good nutrients. Set those. Once you get most of the veggies out and the bones, just slowly pour it into your strainer. Again, using care if it's still warm and being careful not to splash. <laughs> so amazing as um, you'll see this is a chicken bone. This bone broth takes it down to like this easily crumbles in my fingers, just absolutely crumbles. So before I give it to the dogs, I do go ahead and smash it up really good to make sure that it is extremely soft and pliable. Uh, if it's not, you'll want to toss it just because you don't want to take any chances. Um, and you will want to be careful with dogs that uh, maybe have issues with their kidneys um, the higher calcium levels in this. Um, again, consult your doctor if the higher calcium that's, that's in these bones um, would be okay for them to consume. But you see, like, here's a piece of ginger. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that out. Um, and again, I feed this a couple times a week to the dogs, and it is so good for them. It's full of so many good nutrients. So 
Uh, definitely do not toss this out. Put it to good so use. So now you have all of your delicious broth. This next step, what I do, um, this is just what I do, is I take the broth and I put it in the freezer. Because that broth is really warm, what I wanna do is have the fat separate and I find putting it in the freezer is the quickest way to do that. It doesn't freeze it, uh, that is unless you leave it in there for a long time, but it'll cool it down quicker. And then you'll see the, the fat easily um, forms on the top and we'll be able to ladle that out. Now that our broth has fully cooled, um, this has enabled the fat to uh, solidify at the top. So I just take my wonderful little <laughs> metal spatula here and literally just ladle off this top layer of fat. So you see, I saved this fat because it is actually really nutrient rich as well. So, and it's a, a fat that is not processed. So um, I actually use it when I make my eggs I put it in other things and I even add it to, when I give it to the dogs, I add it uh, a little bit um, to that as well. So again, you wanna be careful, especially if a dog is dealing with something um, with their pancreas or kidneys and they need a low fat diet, but otherwise this is, I mean, just tons of turmeric and, and a, a lot of good nutrients in there for assimilating vitamins, so, so you just, take this and we will save this for later use and then i fill my jars with the delicious broth so i love using these glass mason jars and that way um, i i freeze it um, and i then can use it throughout the week so if you do freeze it you want to make sure that you leave plenty of space for expansion otherwise your jars will break and something i just learned tonight i've used these jars for years, but it actually has a fill to here line. You can't really see it, but a fill to here line. So that will help you determine how far you should go. A lot of people completely strain their broth. Um, they use a fine metal um, mesh net and completely strain it. But for me, I, I don't do that all the way. Now my husband, he likes it completely strained when he enjoys it. So I, We'll do that for him, but for myself, if there's herbs floating, a little bit of the fat left over, I that doesn't bother me at all. It just adds to the flavor. So it's up to you what you decide to do. Okay, so here is our yummy finished product. And I always love to top it off with fresh herbs. Okay, now for the best part, enjoying it. Oh, it is so yummy. You will want to check your teeth, though, because of all of the herbs before you go out in public. But seriously, it is so comforting and soothing. It feels like a nice warm hug in a glass. Um, and as you drink it, just think about all of the benefits um, that you will be able to experience as it absorbs. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions um, or want to leave a comment, please feel free to do so. I just ask that you please be kind and respectful, and hopefully soon we'll have more content for you guys. Um, but here is to cherishing what is real, and I certainly hope that this can aid you in your journey uh, for a healthier life and healing your body. All right, have a beautiful rest of your day.